Well, welcome back everyone to the Falcon Dive. We are back again with our chemistry department at UW River Falls. We've got some special guests joining us today to talk everything uh, you might want to know about our de chemistry department at UW River Falls. So uh, to start us off, again, I'm John, your host. Uh, and of course, I've got my wonderful co-host Nicole with me today. It's me. Uh, yes, yeah, some wonderful guests here with us. So uh, Carl and Courtney from our chemistry department, would you mind uh, both sh sharing a brief introduction and a fun fact about yourself? Yes, John. My name is Carl Peterson. I'm a professor of chemistry in the Department of Chemistry and Biotechnology, and I'm also associate dean of the College of Arts and Sciences. Uh, fun fact, I'm a league bowler. I average about 215, and I've shot uh, 300 two times. Whoa! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Carl, at the start of that, I thought you were going to say, I'm a Leo, and I was like, oh, we're going into Zodiacs. <laughs> okay. Actually, I'm a Taurus, but... Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> my coworker Abby's a Taurus. We know Taurus. There you go. <laughs> okay, excellent. Bowling. That's wow. so wicked. Cool. Yeah. Right? Brittany, what about okay. you? Yeah, I'm going to be a junior at UWF next year. I'm a chemistry major, animal science minor, um, and a fun fact about me is I play golf at the university. So, yeah. Wonderful. An athlete as well. Yeah. Okay, great. And Courtney, do you want to share with us where you are right now? Yeah, so I'm actually at my internship. They let me step away to do this, but um, I'm working at a research and development company called Interfacial Consultants in Prescott, Wisconsin this summer. Um, we're doing a lot of material science and chemistry stuff, and yeah, it's really cool. <laughs> She's Sounds fancy, awesome. John! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is really fancy. I'm learning a ton. I never knew it was even out there, but it's really great. To start off, we just hear a little bit about the program of chemistry at River Falls. What makes it unique here? Right. So our chemistry program is uh, approved by the American Chemical Society. And so what that is, it's uh, sort of a baseline measure of quality of a chemistry program. You've got to have, you know, certain faculty across the subdisciplines. You've got to have a certain curriculum. You've got to have certain access to scientific journals, certain instrument holdings. And so if you have those, then your program can become approved by the American Chemical Society. And so we are that. And then that also gives us the ability to certify students' degrees in chemistry. And so at the end of each academic year, we will file a report with the American Chemical Society where we will indicate which students, as through their curriculum, met the certification requirements of the American Chemical Society. So it's an extra little credential that those students would get um, you know, if they completed that curriculum. So not every chemistry program is ACS approved. And so for a student looking at chemistry programs, that's certainly a question you want to ask. Is your program American Chemical Society approved? And then hopefully there's somebody there that could speak to what does that mean? to be approved. We actually have uh, two entitlements from UW system to grant degrees. One is in chemistry, and the other is in biotechnology. But then within those, we can define all sorts of options. And so within the chemistry, we have a, a normal chemistry option. We have a biochemistry option, so it brings a little more biology into the mix. We have a biochemistry pre-professional option. So this is something that's attractive to students that are interested in things like pharmacy or medicine or veterinary medicine, but they wanna do it through chemistry rather than uh, biology or animal science or some other uh, degree program. And then we've got a broad field science education chemistry program. That's for folks who wanna teach chemistry at the high school level. And then we also have our dual degree in engineering program. And so this is a program where we have partner schools in engineering where a student will do two to three years of curriculum at River Falls, and then they transfer to the engineering school and do two to three years of curriculum there. And at the end of the program, they wind up with two degrees, a degree in chemistry from UWRF and a degree in chemical engineering or material science engineering from our partner school. And then biotechnology is a separate uh, degree entitlement. So you can major in biotechnology, and it's actually fairly unique. There are not that many uh, undergraduate biotechnology programs, especially in the upper Midwest. Yeah, nice. yeah. Nice. That, something for everyone. Yes, for real. Yeah. Courtney, what is your like hope with your kind of combo? You had that animal science minor. Yeah, well, I came into the university undecided. I knew I loved science and I knew I wanted to do something in the science field eventually, but I didn't know what. And so I took all sorts of science classes and said, okay, I like chemistry a lot. So I wanted to major in that. So I just went with the regular chemistry track. And then I do love animals too. So I was like, why not throw in the animal science minor and see what I can do with it or what I can't, but it's still great to learn about it and just 
broaden my science knowledge. So that's where I ended up here. That's a fun combo. <laughs> We have a lot of animals for you to work with, so you get yes. everything right. Indeed. Definitely. <laughs> and then, Carl, just one side note, too. I know I've talked with you about this before, but a big conversation I have with students is a lot of students are interested in forensic science, and they yep. don't understand how much chemistry plays a role in that. Can you talk about if we have options on that platform at UWRF? Sure. In general, somebody who's interested in forensic science would... Uh, you know, major in chemistry and kind of emphasize analytical chemistry and biochemistry as part of their education. And that's for folks who want to wind up in the, you know, laboratory aspect of forensic science. Um, we also have a criminology program at campus that gets into the sort of the law enforcement and the science behind crime and why uh, people commit crime and things like that. And so we do have some folks that do a major in chemistry, again, focusing on that analytical aspect of chemistry, but then might minor in criminology if that's a trajectory they're on. But a lot of your forensic science programs themselves are actually master's levels programs. So you get an undergraduate degree in chemistry or biochemistry and then go on to a master's degree in forensic science. Excellent. That's exactly what I needed. Because I know students say they express like they'll watch a TV show and the lab coats get them or they're like, I want to be in the lab, but they don't understand that science component that's around it. So thank you so much for explaining. Yeah. And I should say biotechnology can be a good vehicle for that too. It, uh, assume they approach uh, choose appropriate coursework in chemistry to supplement the in-depth in electives that are allowed in that major. So for our next question, uh, would you say, Carl or Courtney, Courtney, I feel like you're going to share your favorite, but is there a favorite class that students kind of enjoy taking within the chemistry um, department? Well, as a student, I guess I took a polymer chem class this last semester and it deals with plastics and it's something I hadn't even thought about before I had come into chemistry. I mean, I know plastics are a big thing, but I never thought I'd be learning about them at the undergrad level. So that class was just really intriguing. The labs were very involved and very cool to experience and see how plastics are made because I never even considered how they were made. So that was probably my favorite class so far. I don't know if you caught my face <laughs> when you said what the course was. I'm like, oh. yeah. <laughs> It's like plastics. Wow. Science. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. For me, it's uh, organic chemistry one lab. That's the course where I feel like um, the curriculum advances to the point where students can start to feel like chemists. Um, in fact, one of the unique features uh, going back uh, to that idea of River Falls chemistry is that we have two different introductory science track sequences for students to choose from. One we call the traditional track, and that's what you'll see at every university where you've got a year of general chemistry at the freshman level, and then you get organic chemistry at the sophomore level. So it'd be that first lab course in the organic sequence that I'm talking about. River Falls also has an organic first introductory curriculum. And so these students come in and the first two courses they take in their curriculum are organic chemistry courses, specifically designed to teach to freshmen. And so one of the things I like to promote about that curriculum, you know, appeals to the scientist in me that as chemists, we've got all these cool tools available to us. And in the traditional curriculum, you're not experiencing them until your sophomore year. It's like, geez, you're a quarter of the way through your program. By the time you're seeing these things, it seems too late on some level. Yeah. Whereas in the organic first curriculum, it's in the halfway through the first semester, you're getting hands-on experience with these techniques. And so to me, that appeals to the scientist in me, get them on those cool instruments early. It's probably part of the reason that they got into science in the first place and give them a longer uh, portion of their program than to use those tools for research projects and upper level coursework. Excellent. And that, I know one of our, is it one of our chemistry labs, Carl, is valued at over $230,000 with the equipment that's in there, is that correct? There's a NMR spectrometer that the retail price when we got it was $330,000. So, <laughs> you know, whether you're doing it as a freshman or a sophomore, the organic chemistry, you envision yourself sitting at the controls of a $330,000 instrument acquiring data on a sample. Courtney's been there. <laughs> Little intense, but very cool to see all that it can do, for sure. That's wild. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's like literally and, wild. Certainly hands-on experience is something that we value in our program. So it's not uh, students submitting samples and getting data, it's the students sitting down at the instrument, learning a little bit about how that instrument works, how to interface with it to set up their experiments, get their data, and then ultimately uh, interpret that data. Our next question is uh, about re research and internships. Uh, so maybe Courtney, you can share a little bit more about what this internship entails, how you got there, 
Um, and then if you have any research experience or maybe you wanna call, uh, Carl talk a little bit about research at UWRF as well. Yeah, definitely. Um, so this internship, I this is the first summer I'm doing it and I acquired it through the faculty at River Falls. So we have a staff member there who actually works here as well. And I met him um, the first semester of my sophomore year. We talked, he saw my passion for chem and he was like, hey, you should apply for this internship. It's gonna give you a broad range of chem, a lot of machine work, a lot of, you know, see if you like the lab work, see if you like this part of chemistry. And so I applied for it and luckily in March, right before COVID hit and I couldn't really get out much, um, I got to tour the place and meet all my coworkers and I applied and it was kind of an on-site interview and then they offered me the internship the next day. So wow. I got really lucky having those connections um, and it's been great. It's been great experience so far. Like I said, I'm working with materials. So we're trying to combine different resins and different things like that to you know, accomplish a goal. And our goal right now is porosity. Stuff like that, you know, things you didn't really think about at a microscopic level. So that's what I'm doing this summer. And it's definitely, I'm learning a ton. <laughs> like I said, I, I'm a sophomore, coming off my sophomore year. So I have my basis in them, but I'm really getting to apply my knowledge and learn a ton more field experience, which has been great. <laughs> And I've also done a little research um, with one of our organic professors, Dr. Haley. Um, I started to do that this last semester and I got to work a lot with her and the um, ball mill machine, which is um, mechanochemistry. So <laughs> I'm learning a lot in a lot of different areas, but it's great the opportunities that I've gotten through the university for sure. Totally. That sounds <clears throat> fantastic, learning all kinds of things and um, just sweet that a, a faculty member connected you to that opportunity. Really great. Yes. But obviously, yeah. Courtney, you've done the work, girlfriend. Yes. <laughs> you're not in there. Yeah. <laughs> lucky. You're a smart, strong woman. Right. And <laughs> so, like, go off. Yeah. So, proud of you. Thank great. you. <laughs> yeah, one of the features of the chemistry program, you know, it's each of the faculty have their own expertise. And traditionally, chemistry is divided into five subdisciplines. There's analytical chemistry, biochemistry, inorganic chemistry, organic chemistry, and physical chemistry. And to have an AC American Chemical Society approved program like we do, you have to have faculty expertise across all of those areas. And so therefore, we've got research experiences available across all those different areas. That's intense. <laughs> <laughs> Very cool to see too, obviously, to have five different opportunities. Could you share what some of our alumni are doing of our chemistry and biotechnology programs? Sure. I just I heard a few updates recently that I can share. Uh, so Cordell Schrank just graduated in May. He was an advisee of mine and found out that he just obtained a position at Pace Analytical in the Twin Cities. And so that was, uh, you know, his goal as we were going through his program was I want to go to work in industry, maybe pursue graduate school after a couple of years in industry. And, uh, you know, given the tightness of our economy and the unemployment rate going a certain direction, it was great that he was able to obtain that position. Yeah. Uh, John Farron is another one. We just talked about him a few moments ago. He was uh, graduated this May, was an intern at Interfacial. That turned into a full-time position for him. I uh, heard from a, a student, Corey Windorf. He was a 2012 graduate of the program. So he went off to graduate school out in California and did a postdoc in Florida. He just got a faculty position at New Mexico State University. Oh, wow. So it was pretty cool to hear from him, you know, yeah. just seeing students when they get to their final landing place. And it's interesting how with some students that landing place changes as they go through their program. You know, oh, I just want to get my degree and they can't see past that. But then it's I want to get that job or I want to go to that graduate program and then ultimately seeing where they end up. And then, of course, Jeff Cernahouse, who I mentioned earlier, too, is another great story. He was a 93 graduate of the program and uh, has that very successful serial entrepreneur, has that very successful uh, company right here in the St. Croix Valley. Fantastic. Falcons are all over doing all kinds of different work. That's great. Yep. John, is it time for fun questions? I think it is. <laughs> Okay. okay. <laughs> so I will start with the fun questions today. So question for, ooh, Courtney. Uh, would you rather be unable to use search engines or unable to use social media? Social media. Okay. I, even though I'm your typical like 20 year old, I don't I go on social media, but I don't think I live without Google. <laughs> uh, I said, there's Perhaps. a difference. 
<laughs> there is. I'm one who you'd call directionally challenged, so I can get lost pretty darn quick. So the Google and Google Maps and it's essential for me. Got it. <laughs> Excellent. Media, it's, yeah, social media is great for connecting with friends, but I could look about it. Yes. Excellent. <laughs> All right, Carl, would you rather your only mode of transportation be a donkey or a giraffe? A donkey or a giraffe? Oh, Carl, I'd probably we're take the really the... hard hitting science questions. <laughs> yeah, I'd probably take the donkey. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, I, I'm, you know, I think it's easier to get on and off a donkey compared to a giraffe. <laughs> I got to think parking issues are going to be more challenging with a giraffe. <laughs> right. Very true. Definitely. <laughs> Good answer. Yeah. Excellent. Well, thank you so much for the information, hanging out with us for a little bit on the Pelican Dive. Again, you know my love for science, even though I can't handle it, but so proud of what's going on here. Carl, thank you for supporting our student body. Courtney, thank you for being a star. Is there any final notes you two have for anyone else watching or listening? Oh, thanks for having us. It's been, a good, been fun. I was just going to say, don't be afraid. Chemistry is a lot of work, but it's really rewarding. And it's great to, you know, learn everything that's in it. So don't be afraid to come into this major and try new things. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's not too late. <laughs> no, it's too late. But <laughs> it's all right. we'll catch y'all on the next one. Thanks for watching.